Shalom, shalom, family. Welcome once again to another um, Tanakh review. My name is Uzi Alewi. I'm one of the teachers of Congregation Beit Da'akak Mubina, located in the in in the Brooklyn section of New York City. Also located in the um, I always forget <laughs> exactly where we're from yeah. from the Red Hook section of Brooklyn. Um, I shouldn't be forgetting that, the Red Hook section of Brooklyn. Um, our congregation is located at 382 Hamilton Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. And we, um, you can also contact us at 347-622-9090 if you have any questions, and particularly uh, any questions on this lesson that's going to be brought forth today. First and foremost, giving glory to the Most High King of the Universe, Yahweh Zebaot, the one who created us all. And unto him and him alone do we give glory. We all say hallelujah and we give glory unto his high and holy name. I thank the most high God for life, food, clothing, and shelter, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I pray that the creator of heaven and earth continue to be with us all and protect us. Um, at this time, as we've been doing for um, over a year now, um, we will be hearing from Nasik Zuri Shaddai Ben Yehuda. And he's going to be going through some chapters a um, couple of chapters, one in the book of Psalms and one in the book of jo Job. And um, as we, we're waiting our time to start the Haftarot portions, as we reopen or we reopen the Torah from the beginning again, we start over from the beginning, and then he'll be following um, each um, uh, um, Haftarot that come from week to week following the Sidra for the week. So... Without any further ado, I introduce to everyone um, one of my teachers, even Nasik Zerishadah ben Yehuda. Shalom, Nasik, how are you? Uh, fine, uh, totally good, Baruch uh, Hashem. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to give praise to the Supreme Time Universe, God of my forefathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, and due respects to the platform on uh, DCB, which uh, Chief Prince Jerry, our spiritual leader, and uh, Chief Uzal's hostness, and to all the princes, chief brothers and sisters, um, the, 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 the Marim, the, the, you know, the Rabbanim, the, um, the Kohanim, I greet you all in time for Father Shalom Aleichem and the early Shabbat Shalom. Um, and I like to say, Adonai Sefati Taku Fiyogi Tila Theka, Olo Om Dema Lips, my master declare that praise. Um, <clears throat> I'll be um, just speaking more in relationship to the season that we in, because uh, as we know that we just got into the month of call, uh, whatever is, is commonly known as Elu, which is the sixth month on the Hebrew calendar, counting from the Exodus, which is the month of Abi. Uh, so Elu is um, a month, you know, just like we have six days, then we prepare for the Shabbat. You know, we have, you know, six years, then we prepare for the sabbatical year, and we have the uh, seven times seven years of the 49th year, then we, we prepare for the, the Yobel. Well, <clears throat> You know, as we um, again, this, this is a preparation month. Um, it's um, it's used as an acronym that's used to describe this month uh, in relationship to uh, the Creator in the nation of Israel, which is um, found in the, in the book of Song of Songs, which is um, the acronym mean, you know I need you know for the month of Elu, which is says um, I need uh, Ladodi 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 me I need Ladodi Ladodi me I am to my beloved. And my beloved is to me. So that would be the acronym, the letter from each one it would be the, 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 the acronym for Elu. And, and so only way you could change to get a relationship with the most high is saying, I want the relationship to be on my end as well. You know, it's bad to be in love on one end and the other end is not in love with you. So it's not reciprocal. So in this particular time, <coughs> In this particular late stage of the year, and we follow any kind of chronological order, and we take the book from the Exodus and from the time that we had the, the revelation at Mount Sinai until this particular um, time of the year, we noticed that um, Moshe, you know, had went up, gave us the revelation. God had gave us the revelation at Mount Sinai in the, in the month, in the third month after the departure from Egypt. And we know that we messed, uh, he went up there for 40 days and we, you know, start messing around a little bit. And 
And then after we start messing around a little bit, of course, it's a problem because we allow things to happen in our neighborhood. And so when he come back down, he broke the first tablets. A lot of people had to die. 3,000 died at that, at that incident. But it was outside influence. And we violated and had a calf, but the calf was not so much even to replace the creator, but the calf was actually replaced Moshe. You know, and uh, but it still was a violation because Moshe was the emissary. And as um, those that read in the book of, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, when the Sidros in, in the book of Deuteronomy uh, past week, we know that it said that um, there's a lot of things in the book of Show 14, which I like to just bring out in relationship to this season. Um, one, the Show 14 that was the Sidra for the Shabbat that just passed. Um, when they talk about, and in, in the English, I'm just going to read it since I, I have it um, somewhat coming from the 16th chapter of, uh, of Deuteronomy. I, I, I'll read it myself because uh, it won't take, take much. I just want to highlight a couple of things here. Uh, being is, is related to the season. So the 16th chapter, the 18th verse, it says, Judges and officers shall thou make in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, tribe by tribe, and they shall judge the people for righteous judgment. Uh, what what is, speaks volume on it is that in the Hebrew, when we look at it in the Hebrew, um, it says, um, you know, shof, shoftim, shoterim, titain lecha, because she are reka. Now, um, the 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 shof, uh, you know, the shof, uh, the shof team, we know our judges in Hebrew. All right, and, uh, and we know uh, the the shof, shof, uh, is actually a police officer on their force. Now, I, we we normally say it's six hundred and thirteen law statutes and judgments within the whole uh, first five books that we tend to follow. But what's unique about this here particular um, beginning of this particular section is that uh, judges and officers is counted as one command. It's not counted as two. Normally we think of, you know, um, uh, a, a, you know, a man should not wear that which pertains to a woman and a woman should not wear that which pertains to the man. We can think of it as two separate Things one could focus on the man and one focuses on the woman, um, but when it, when it, when it, but when we when we look at this particular uh, pasuk or verse, in the beginning of a, uh, the sidra that just passed this week, um, it, it, it it counts it as one, office judges and officers as one command, inseparable. And you say, and you will ask the question, you, you will say, well. Why was this separate, uh, separate instead of when and is a combined and seems like it's an addition? Why would it be separate? Because when you think about what a judge does, a judge actually gives you the theory of what's going on with the law, with the particular act. It gives you the theory about how it should be done. But the officers is the one that put the practicality in action. So we cannot have theory of law without practice of law. And this is one of the areas that I focus on, let's say, well, um, and the, the thing about Re'e is that um, from the Sidrach before that, is that Moshe was, um, you know, which means C, the word C, Re'e is in the, in the singular, but yet it's addressed to the plural. And, and they talk about, I put before you, a, you know, a blessing and a curse. All right, so now, why would the, um, with anybody that study Hebrew know that the verb must agree with the noun and number and in gender? So why would you use the word re and use a plural noun, pronoun noun? And um, some viewpoints is that Everybody pretty much can see a problem, a curse, but everybody can see a blessing. It's only a certain few that can recognize that this is a blessing and that Torah is a blessing, that doing law is a blessing. 
So now when we get that, what's, what's, what the reason I'm, I'm bringing about show for team, which I'm going to deal with the Psalms mostly in this particular season, because it's a Psalm that's, sung, uh, that's, that's read throughout the, the period of time, which is a 27th Psalm. And it's read it traditionally from the beginning of a, in a month of uh, Elul, the sixth month. And some read it only for the whole month of Elul. And then some read it all the way to Shemini and Set. It depends on um, you know, certain customs or traditions they might follow. But it's called the Psalm of Repentance. <clears throat> now, but let's, I'd like to just bring out and show how this ties in because Shofatim, this particular Sidra, Shofatim is always, it's the first Sidra of the month of Elul, no matter what year it is. You always start that month when Elul come in. The first Shabbat in Elul, this is the Sidra that's mostly read, Shoftim. And you say, wow, when you think about, we have a book called Shoftim, which is Judges. And ironically, the book of Shemuel, part of that belongs to the book of Shoftim. And also, uh, the book of Ruth belongs to that same period of time. So, and you find that that you say, well, you have judges in the book of Shoftim and where it's read that when it's spoken on that every man did what was right in their own eyesight. So, so rules and regulations will fluctuate, but what they're missing is the enforcement of the rules. That's why here it says officers and you know, judges and officers. So that's why it gets back to the first point and premise wise count as one. You just can't have theory of law without practice of law, where it could be enforced, where it could be enacted. So when the judges make a ruling, then somebody got to follow up on the ruling and perform what the ruling is concerned with. So um, that's hence why that particular law out of the 613 laws is counted as one law, uh, one command out of the 613. All right, another thing that on your gates, we know we have regular gates to a city, regular gates to a house. But then to take it on a more spiritual level, because we're supposed to get more spiritually involved in this particular time. And since Chopra team is like a spiritual essence, is that you, you learn, we talk about your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Those things that you said, and, and, and what's so interesting about this particular Sidra that came up, it says, make judges and officers for yourself in Hebrew. That means before you judge somebody else, you judge yourself. And that's where it's written literally in the Hebrew. And um, when we look at it in the Hebrew the language, it would say, make judges and officers, you know, you know, uh, in all your gates, but it's for you. So the first thing you do is that I create a judge and an officer, somebody gonna make me, motivate me. And, and, and guide me into performance of Torah and performance of the, the creator's will. So that's before I, I'm able to judge somebody else, I gotta judge myself and say, am I worthy to judge this individual? Am I gonna be really, I know what I mean, I'm gonna be biased or impartial. If I'm gonna do what the citrus say, where it says, you know, Zedek, Zedek, Tiado, pursue, you know, righteousness. And they mentioned righteousness, righteousness pursuit. And it's very few things are mentioned in, 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 in the Tanakh where it says pursuit. In the 34th Psalm, I think around the 15th verse, it says, seek and pursue peace. You know? So sometimes, you know, I mean, so we seek and peace and pursue that as well. But, um, you know, but um, righteousness, you know, because you want to be able to follow the correct path. Now, what I like about this particular Sidra, as it fits into the song of repentance, as we go into the season of repentance, as we go through this area of trying to get ourselves together, because to say I'm sorry and really feel remorseful and make a change, it's not instantaneous. It's instantaneous to say I'm sorry, but it's not instantaneous to be able to make corrections in one's life. So now as we look, Further into this um, particular um, sidra, you have every aspect, judging, you have prophecy about prophets, 
you got about priests, you got about generals, and you got about a king. All right. And you know, and, and you know, so now Moshe, and when we talk about Deuteronomy, and we talk about where before Moses said, and the dust spoke the Lord to Moses, speaking to the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy, you got the creator speaking through Moshe, as opposed to Moses relating what the creator has spoke in Deuteronomy, in that sense. So now what's, what's important is that Moshe was, was first, a general, all right? He's a general. He was, you know, he, he, for us, um, when we fought the Amalekites, he was out there with his hands up and told Joshua to choose men. He was a lead man when it came down to the fall of uh, Egypt. He raised his hand up and the waters collapsed upon him. So he was a, a, a look to man in that area. Uh, also, Moshe himself uh, was the first uh, acting as a high priest. So what do you do? You know, he winds up, you know, in the book of uh, Sidra Shimony, he the one anointed Aaron, Aaron, Aaron and his sons. So he played in a role of a priest in, 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 that, in that respect. And you have laws concerning those particular individuals. I, when you, you also um, have, you know, like I said, not just the judges, not just the general, I, but, as a prophet, he tell you in this particular syndrome how to recognize a, a you know I mean, a shaker, a false prophet. So in this particular syndrome, it's your team. And not only that, um, you know, he, you know, he, he, um, he was like a king. When in in, a, in a syndrome of Korah, he said, "You take too much upon yourself, like you the king, like you're in charge." And he talks about the authority of king and Shoftim. So what we learn from this is that to really be able to judge and to be really able to um, give good advice, in most cases, you had to have that hands-on experience to some degree. Moses was one of the greatest authorities. That's why we call him Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, a great teacher. Because not only did learn from him then, but we're learning from him now. That and he was able to he perform and worked in all those capacities, and sometimes some leaders don't recognize. Hey, that's not me. I don't have that skill. I need to defer. But Moses was able to teach about all these different aspects of society and leadership as a prophet, because he was a prophet. As a priest, because he acted as a priest. As a king, could you know? I mean, because he was an authority. As a general. You know, and as and as a compassionate individual, so he was able to recognize all those aspects and all these things come up in the book of Shofatim, as far as judging. So now you say, what is a quality of a, a judge? You know, we know righteousness is a quality, but you could be an individual that's not a wrongdoer, but you may not be a righteous individual. And you say, well, how could that be? If I'm not doing wrong, why can I not be righteous? Because righteousness is always involved in what you do for other people and how you relate to other people as well. So you're not wrong in anybody because you're not around anybody. You might isolate yourself. You might keep yourself from a distance, but are you really assisting and doing anything? So because... So, you know, I, I used to hear this coming up um, as a youth. And sadly enough, you know, still hear from older people that have been around for a while. Well, I don't do anybody any wrong, but tell me how much good you do for people. Don't tell me how much, uh, you know, you're not doing wrong. That's not so much impressive. What is really impressing is how much good are you doing for people? You know, and that's what that's so when we talk about the judge, the judge in the book, his his aim and objective is not so much to persecute, but to see if we can find some exoneration in the case. 
because you refer to look at both of them as being, you know, I mean, guilty when they come before the judge because you got a cause. I got something against this guy, and this guy got something against me. So now, you know, what I mean, we got to, you know, what I mean, condemn the wicked, you know, and, and uphold the righteousness. But first, you got to condemn what is wrong. So, so, so uh, that's um, one of, one of the areas about show for team and about on your gates. Because through your eyes, you could sin. Through your mouth, we could sin. And through our ears, you know, uh, we, they had the saying, you know, Lama Hey Wat Rock Rage, Lama Hey Rage, Lama Hey Rage, when somebody, you know, started to bring up a whole lot of nonsense, you know, which is another term for Lashon Hara, you know, the you know, that 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 evil tongue. So, um, we, um, and, and one of the things about, um, I like to go into, just uh, before I go into the song, I like to finish up on the song, um, the 27th Psalm. I'm just going to read a few things about Job, just so for us to be able to reflect somewhat concerning this particular season. And, uh, and then um, going to the book of uh, the 27th Psalm, all right, which is in the, in the writings now. The book of Job so was written go to by- Job first? Yes, yes. Um, in the book of Job, in the first chapter, I'm only going to read 12 verses. Gotcha. All right. In the book of Job. second here to find it. All right. In the book of Job, we know that was written by Moshe. You got it. I'm waiting for you. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the thing is that since um, it, was, it was written by Moshe, some people think it's a fictitious book, but we know already that Ezekiel make mention of, you know, it, 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 uh, Noah, Daniel, and Job was alive, they'd be only able to save themselves. He's not going to use a mystical individual along with people we know that actually insisted. All right. The book of Job is one of them books that um, you can't figure out the creator. You know, in, 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 in the short. But I'm not, my, my thing is not to really expound on the whole book of Job, but it's to bring out some things in relationship to this particular season and, uh, and, and then we'll finish up with the um, 27th um, song. But um, so we're gonna get like a bio of Job and stuff. I know um, um, Cohen Mikael did a whole series on um, Job. So those that might be interested, you might wanna um, go through those 42 chapters of Job, might wanna look at um, Cohen Mikael uh, of Hashaba. Um, um, series on, on Job. So my thing in this particular matter is not to expound on the whole book of Job, just to relate to the seas and dime in. So if you got it, uh, Chief, you can go, go from there. All right. We're in the book of Job, chapter one, starting from, from verse one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and the man was wholehearted and upright and one that feared God and shunned evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His possessions also were 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses in a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the children of the East. Hold on right there, stop right there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> they give me a little bio of the man, but it don't talk much about his, his uh, progenitors. You know, but, you know, but it, it gives you a little bio, bio of character of this particular individual. And next to uh, Noah, he got one of the most greatest accolades, you know, wholehearted and upright and one that feared God and shunned evil. So that's a lot of accolades for an individual. But, uh, but uh, and it says he, he's wealthy too in that. All right, so usually when you get wealth, some, you know, they say money changes you, but money actually just uh, shows more of what you are. You just do it on a bigger scale. But, uh, but we're going to pick it up from the fourth verse. Fourth verse, fourth verse reads, And his sons used to go and hold the feast in the house of each one upon his day. And they will send and invite their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job, Job said, 
It may be that my sons have sinned and blasphemed God in their hearts. Thus did Job, Job continually. All right, now, what is good about it is that he considering that they ain't saying nothing aloud that he could, he could put a finger on. But you could tell from the way they live. What person could feast every single day? What kind of job is that? You know? That that's, 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 that's your curriculum. I'm having my feast today because it's one of us. And all seven of them have a big banquet. And he was one of the great men of these. So you know it's not just a, a, a small dinner. And the sisters, every day, their whole life, they don't talk about their marriage or anything like that. It's about a party, about frivolity, doing it, just doing whatever. And then after that, he said, What's, what's interesting is says that Job sent and sanctified them. And he say he told them to come where he was at. That's important. He sent this out, I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to have somebody take care of this here and, and clean you up. You know, you know, and sanctify him. And then, and then he didn't stop there. You know, and rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them. He's doing that. And say they're there. He's doing that for his kids. And said, it may be that my sons have sinned and blasphemed God in their hearts. Uh, he did this all the time. So where's the communication between the father and the children? You know, we don't see that. So there's a lot going on here that he got the character but also, as great as that character is, it's a slight bit of neglect. So, and that's why I said, sometimes a person, you can say, I don't do any wrong, but how righteous is, but we know his character as an individual, he's okay. But he's not influential in that sense, all right? But his character is okay. Noah had a great character, but how influential was he? Daniel had a great character, but how influential was he? Because the other guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Ananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, they had a good character already. So how influential was Daniel? in other people's lives. When it said that he will pray towards Jerusalem three times a day. So when we look, look at the book and, it's, and, 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 um, and um, you know, it's, it's not to bring any um, negativity concerning like condemning the individuals of the, of the great men of these books. Uh, what I'm trying to do is enlighten those that might listen and look into the uh, actual underlying character because we're supposed to learn from the mistakes of our ancestors and try to do better. And also, we're only supposed to rehearse the righteous acts of our forefathers. So if we're only supposed to rehearse the righteous acts, then the wrong acts, we're not supposed to duplicate that and follow that through. That's why the law in Exodus 20, the chapter says, Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon their children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That means that influence is coming down and we, they still practicing that influence and they don't care about the creator. But showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That means that the individual, you only get mercy when you did wrong, but yet you thought you was trying to do right. But you did wrong. That's the only time mercy comes. Mercy only shows up after the judgment. You know, but uh, you know, and, and, and we got to understand that. So, and this is what Job did continually. Now we're gonna just go a few more uh verses here. Because we only like I said, I'm gonna do just four verse verses. six. All right. Now I fell upon the day that the sons of God came to present themselves before Yehovah, and Satan came also among them, and Yehovah okay, said on all right, before we, uh, all right, before we get to the seventh verse. All right. Um, 
B'nai Elohim, <coughs> sons of God. Every time we've seen that, it's only written twice in the scriptures. Once in Genesis and once here. And always the problem, once we've seen that term. And, all, and, and there's a lot in this here, particularly a few verses I'm bringing up, but there's always a problem. In Genesis, it was a problem. And over here, we're going to see a problem coming up. And say so Satan, which means the adversary, he was there. Now, I'd like to bring out some other things, not to, so much the, the you know, come on um, people, sectarian um, um, ideologies, you know, um, a bit, I'd just like to bring this is point while I'm here in the book of Job, because I know a lot of people read the book of Job. And some people, you know, read other books, you know, Enoch and everything like that, and about the fallen angels and the Nephilims and about a, a big commotion went on in heaven and it was cast down and Satan brought so many things down with, with them. All right. One, it's location, location. And Genesis, it's talking about the sons of God in the earth. Here, this is going to be in a heavenly courtroom in the book of Job. So now when you say B'nai Elohim, we're talking about guys, men, mankind in Genesis. We're over here. It's the location that makes the difference. All right. Now, if we thought about fallen angels or somebody cast out, then what are you doing showing up at the meeting? Why is Satan showing up at a meeting? If he's kicked out of heaven, what he's doing in God's throne room? If I banish you, you ain't coming to visit me. So we got to consider that as we read the book of Job. And I get caught up with the other stuff right away. First say, well, where this is taking place? Is it taking place on earth or is it taking place in heaven? How is it being addressed? How, you know, you find about Satan as an accuser and, uh, and um, uh, concerning him with the, um, a few hopped ropes about, uh, back with uh, uh, Joshua the high priest as he was coming through the second well, commonwealth, to build up the, the second temple. And you read where Satan stood as an accuser because it said the priest got dirty garments and God had to rebuke him. So now that seems like he ain't cast somewhere down where he's not in the, in, in the communication. So, and so it makes, a, it brings, what I'm, what I'm trying to say, it brings a very great problem if we don't keep things in a certain perspective when it comes down to doctrine, all right? But, but, that, but that's not my goal here. <clears throat> and, you know, um, so my goal here is to bring up essence in the, of the season, all right? So now the seventh verse, Verse 7 reads, And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Yahuwah and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a wholehearted and an upright man, one that feareth God and shunneth evil? I stop before we get to the night. So now it confirms that this ain't taking place on earth. You know what I mean? And that's why it's, it's talking about, where you, you know, when you're coming down, the creator, when he asks a question, he don't need information. He want a declaration of what you, uh, about you from yourself, but he's not gaining any information. There's no knowledge that you can have that the creator have not already seen past that. But it's a, a de de declaration. And that means that um, and, but they have a job. And it goes on to say further, uh, pick it up. Verse 9, verse 9 reads, Then Satan answered Yehovah and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge around about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions are increased in the land. Uh -huh. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have. Surely he will blaspheme thee to thy face. And Yehovah said unto Shatan, Behold, all that he have is in, is, in the, in, is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Shatan went forth from the presence of Yehovah. Okay, hold right there. <clears throat> all right. 
Uh, that's all I'm going to stop on, you know. So uh, you know, those that need to read about it in the whole book of Joel, a lot, a very philosophical, and a lot of a lot of things that's defined in that, like, you know, I, I was taught a certain doctrine in the past, but then when I read this over here, and I start to analyze and take it slowly, and say, well, that doctrine seemed kind of kind of strange that you know, if somebody, if somebody excommunicated, they excommunicated. If they create a problem, they don't need to create a problem. You know what I mean? But we know the creator allows certain things to go on. All right. But what the, the reason I, I read this is not so much even to focus on uh, say, say time, because the book is called Job in Hebrew, EO, which means uh, one that's persecuted. And we used to have a saying in Ben Zaki, they sure did a job on Job because it's spelled J O B, you know. So, but, uh, but, but one of the things I, uh, I like to uh, say is that how many of us, our character could be bragged on and become a, a contest, a rule, of, a rule of contest between um, the creator that he'll boast on you and make you a, a, a contest as an example. And so sometimes, you know, when we go through certain things, we look at punishment all the time as being because of what we did wrong. And that's what Job and, uh, and the other guys, you know, pretty much convinced them of that he had to do wrong. But sometimes the punishment is not a punishment because you did wrong. It's a test to see how strong you are. So now it's about Job's character, how much that if things not going his way, will he still hold his integrity for God. See, some of us, when we get, go through a certain problems, you know, we give up. I, um, in this Psalm here, the 27th Psalm, I'm getting ready to read, we're going back to 27th Psalm, and the Psalm of Repentance, that they read this particular time, um, David had some problems in his life. And one of the problems, uh, one of the main spots that he had a problem at was Ziklag. Now, Ziklag is not where he's from, and it's not where he's going, and where, uh, where he's born at, and not where he wind up in the end. But we know that, you know, he had a problem where his camp was raided while he was out. And we know that he cried all night. The mighty man who's, who some of these guys could kill 800 with a spear at one time, the other one 500 with a sword. You know, so he had some tough guys running with him, some tough hombres. But yet, they cried, and then they turned on him and wanted to kill him. He lost uh, stuff and people, and they lost stuff and people, and they follow him and risk their life, but they want to kill him because of something that happened. And that's why this song is so important, because when you get into that space, between where you're from and where you need to go, then how are you gonna build up your strength when things go awry? You know, and, and that's that's why we're gonna start in 27 Psalm, which is basically, I think, about 12 verses or so. And 14 verses. Psalm 27. Yes. Starting from verse one, hallelujah. A Psalm of Dawi. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Okay. That means right there and there that no matter how dark things get, it looks bleak, but he can see that he has hope because he's looking at the creator, you know, and that's the line of salvation. And, and when this song is pretty much mentioned, just before he, he did it, you know, he messed up in life, majorly. And it goes on to say what? And, it's, and it reads... Yahweh is the stronghold of my life. Of uh -huh. whom shall I be afraid? Uh -huh. When evildoers come upon me to eat up my flesh, even mine adversaries and my foes, they stumbled and fall and fell. They stumbled okay. and fell. Okay. All right. All right. So they come up to eat up his flesh. They come to beat him down, but that's um, pretty clear. But it says, my adversaries and my foes. See, a person could just be one that's jealous of what you what you have, what your ability is. Other people just say, look it, I don't like them, period. That's gonna be a straight up enemy. But being 
that he look at the creator as his salvation and not to his skill and not to his mighty men, but only to the creator as his salvation, you know, and his stronghold. And what, what it goes on to say? And it reads on and it says, Third. Verse three, though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Mm. Though war shall rise up against me, even then will I be confident. Uh -huh. One thing have I asked well, of you. Right mm -hmm. How many people could be confident in bad times? When things going awry. When it seems like there's no way you could get further along in life. And yet you say, well, I'm strengthening myself in the creator. Just knowing that this God exists and that he's everlasting and that he never ever failed anybody that trusts in him. So, and it goes on further and a fourth four verse. Verse four. One thing have I asked of Yehoah that will I, that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of Yehoah all the days of my life, to behold the graciousness of Yehoah and to visit early in his temple. All right there. That means out of all the physical things I could want in life, women, houses, money, and all, uh, 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 all kind of crowns and fames and stuff like that there. He said, it's the only one thing that he would he request and, and that he would pursue strongly. You know, and then now we just read and, uh, and talk about and, and, um, Chopin that it said, Zedek, Zedek, Tiodo, you know, justice, righteousness, righteousness, pursue. We know that, you know, in the other Psalms, it said about, you know, pursue peace. David, beyond the righteousness, beyond the peace, which is going to be there, he went for the gold. He went to, he said, one thing you will see, you know, and that's to be in the house of the Lord. How many of us say, I don't feel like going to Shabbat today and congregate? Because they say, well, it wasn't commissioned to be built by the creator. But when many people pray for the same thing, that gives you much more strength. Many people had the same goals. And, you know, I'm looking for you to better yourself and you're looking for me to better myself. So that stands Volumes with the creator. So now, um, Dawi said, in the worst of times, when the men wanted to kill him, his own men, after he lost his wife, he lost his children, they lost their wives, they lost their children, and they cried all night. Sometimes you could be in, in the middle of, 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 of a transition and things just go awry. But do you have the strength and the faith and say, look here, I'm confident this is going to be all right because I know who I pray to and I know that I'm devout to be there and said, and, and now he said, he didn't desire to be in a temple. I mean, I mean, in, in a palace inside, you know, you know, I mean, uh, to be, uh, you know, um, say, or, or, you know, had to have all the women in the world, stuff like that. You know, he desired to be in a house of the God and that's what he said. He said, I will seek, pursue that, you know? And he, and he said, not only that, he said, I'm gonna ask and seek. In other words, I'm not waiting for you to give me the answer, God. How many people could say that? That I'm gonna seek to try to be in the presence of God and I'm asking you to help me to be in your presence and keep me in your house, that's what I want. But I'm not waiting for you to give me the answer. I'm gonna make a move myself. I'm gonna pursue myself to try to get in that space. To get in that spot where you, God, will be at. I'm asking, but I'm not waiting. I'm moving. That's why he said, I will ask one thing I will ask of the Lord, and one thing I will seek. That means I'm, 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 I'm going to pursue this. But, but we're going to go a little bit further. Verse 5. It reads... For he concealeth me in his pavilion in the day of evil. He hides. Hold, right Hold on, all right now. I like to bring out a couple of things here from that fifth verse. <clears throat> Another reason this psalm is read traditionally <clears throat> from uh, and, you know the mother Elu 
all the way to, and every single day, except for the Ere of uh, Yom Teruah, and read all the way through to Shemini Ezeri, and because it covers certain things. When you talk about the Lord is my light, you know, when you hear the chauffeur sign on, 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 on Yom Teruah, all right, then certain things are brought to light about you, that you know this is a time, you know, to be pre pre prepared, you know, preparation. So then you normally, especially in New York, not so much even that, you know, down here, but not so, mostly in New York, you have people blowing a show for every single day, you know, all around town, stuff like that, um, through the Montevideo, you know, and the chauffeur sound is supposed to be to wake up and take a look, you know, see something, see the light. And you only can see when you have a, a certain amount of light. People cannot see it in the dark. So when they talk about the start off with that, the light is, you know, it's like almost an emphasis to, um, young, young to rule and again prepare for that. And then when it talks about, um, you know, uh, you know, that he would not fear, you know, what I mean, because the creator could uh, rescue him, you know, that he'd be confident. Um, when we reach Yom Kippur, we don't look at Yom Kippur like, and I spoke on it before, and, and compared to when people fast on Tisha B'Av and people that fast on Yom Kippur, Tisha B'Av. We look at it as being with the, the destruction of the temple. We look at that as being uh, something that we can't fix, something that's lost forever. You know, though we might build another one, it's not that one. Just like that one was not like the first one. It doesn't replace it. But on Yom Kippur, you know, we could say, oh, now. I come in confidence because on Yom Kippur, I got a day that the creator said, he's available to give me another start. And that's the confidence. And when we come in fast on Yom Kippur, it's not a sad, drag out stuff like that. Job had problems so bad that he didn't go ahead. Normally, if you, you, you your body got boils and sores on you, you would try to sit in some kind of soothing medication. You won't sit amongst the ashes but he chose to sit amongst the ashes but whereas when we approach Yom Kippur we're not choosing to sit amongst the ashes we come there in confidence knowing that the, the, the gates of mercy are, are open and that God is able to renew our spirit and give us a, another start so now we come in confidence and now it said under the shadow of the pavilions with the verse we just read all right he concealed me and it's a pavilions in the day of evil. Sukkot is a time that God causes the dwelling booths. And who, who is our protection? You know, fire, fire in the day, I mean, a, fire, a, cloud, a cloud of canopy in the daytime and fire at night. So it kept us um, cool from the sun and warm, warm with the fire at night. And that was and that a protection. So we dwelt in booths. And it's a memorial of us departing from um, Egypt. And that's why it's, it's mentioned joy twice on that particular time. That's why when Shemini and Zerah come around, that's when they conclude the Psalm of Repentance. That's why this is referred to as the Psalm of Repentance. But it, it covers all those three times, Yom, um, Yom Teru, uh, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, when we look at the Psalm and how we analyze that particular time and season that we come into. All right, uh, continue. We're in the middle of verse five. It reads, he hideth me in the cupboard of his tent. He lifted me up upon a rock. Uh -huh. Verse six, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. And I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices with trumpet sound. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto Jehovah. All right, right in there. Now we know normally the chauffeurs, the simple trumpets is supposed to be blown. On our holy days, I mean, Shabbat, on a, um, on, 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 a, on Rosh Kodesh, where they say new moons, and those Shalosh regularly in her pilgrimage times, you know, and all by sacrifices besides other times. So that's why the shofar sound is, is, is really important. Even if you ain't blowing the shofar, it's not even a command for you to, for individuals to blow, but it's more of a command for individuals to listen and hear. So, this, Therefore, we, you know, we try to at least say, I heard the chauffeur, because it's supposed to be a wake-up call. You just read where Uri, Uri, 
awake, awake, you know, from the hop Torah, you know. So that means that what we are waking up for, we're waking up to know what time and season we in and that this is a time to try to get right. And it's not instantaneous. Uh, I, I, met, uh, I, I, I was talking with um, a, a couple of brothers about, I used to hear seasoned individuals, um, chief men, so to speak, when they got down to Yom Kippur in those particular times and days, that they would say, I, I don't care if nobody else forgive me in the congregation, because everybody is wicked. I only want God to forgive me. But, but, but you know, so you condemn people, you don't care about what other people perceive you to be. And, and what you did, you know, you said, it's justified. But these are coming from chief men on Yom Kippur day itself. So some people could be so strong or wrong, don't see that they're wrong. All right. But um, that's like an, an, another episode, but this one I'm gonna focus on about as we prepare for repentance. But, and I'm bringing out those things out is because we got to know, know how to really begin to repent and realize what the change is. And change, repentance is change. Teshuva, um, it means to return, uh, you know, uh, you know and, but the term where, you know, return back to the state that the creator had wanted us to be in the first place and where we started off. See, before we, we, we start off right and we go wrong, you know, and, 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 and so, Doing wrong is something that we develop later. You got to get enough strength to do wrong. And so you know, when we start doing wrong in life, that's come from a certain amount of intellect. And we can perceive, we can uh, conceive that we get wrong. But um, we still might um, most of, more often than not do it because anything that's evil is always good. Looking, good feeling. Evil is always attractive. It was never attracted, no one would do it. But it's because they find some kind of um, uh, you know, beauty in the evil that they do. That's why the people do it. But we're gonna, I'm just going to go a little bit more. Verse 7, it reads, Hear, O Yehoah, when I call with my voice, and uh -huh. be gracious unto me, and answer me. Uh -huh. And thy behalf my heart hath said, Seek ye my face, Thy face, O Yehovah, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast, been, thou hast been my help. Cast me not off. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Stop right there for a moment. All right. Now, this, this is one of the things that Dawi uh, um, um, asked for. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that we're supposed to try to emulate some of the righteous acts of what we did when we approached this time. Because like I said, it's not easy. Change is never easy. Change is never comfortable because we set into a pattern and we got to break a pattern. All right, 10 first. Verse 10 reads, For though my father and my mother have forsaken me, Yehovah will take me up. Teach me right, that no, 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 I just want to break that out a lot, you know, just for a moment. Because I've been hearing so many different interpretations of it. When it says, though your mother and father forsaken you, that means that you got to a stage in life where you somewhat grown. So you're on your own. Not that they won't be there, but they left you to your own because you, you became grown. You got to a certain age. And that's why you read back in Genesis with a man, a man should. Uh, when a, a man take a wife, he should leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife and should be his one flesh. He left out. You know, and he's starting to develop you. And you're making decisions on your account and your household. So now, when you mess up, it'd be nice to turn to moms. It'd be nice to turn to Abba, but to your father. But, 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 but one person you know will have the answer. And the remedy is the creator. 
And that's what he's that's what he's saying here. Not that his parents were no good and they just tossed him to the side. Though you might find you find parents like that, but I'm saying this is not what the um, book is focusing on here. It's focused on that an individual developed into a certain um, adulthood and got to make those adult decisions. Because a lot of times when a child gets your first, his first job, the first thing they say, well, I could buy this, I could buy that, I could buy this, I buy that. They don't think about, you know, you know uh, bank accounts. They don't think about preparing for a place to stay you know, <laughs> uh, or a particular trip or something like that. They don't think about that long-term stuff right away. Uh, most, for the most part, you know, you just think about, oh, I got this job. I got my first job. So you feel grown. I'm making this money. Feel grown. I ain't got to ask, you know, my, my, my parents for any, any, any cash. Uh, I don't care what that thing got. I got money. And buy this here. Something that you really don't really need. Something that's really high, uh, high and expensive. But that's being on your own. You know, and your parents allow you to be on your own. Because most times you still prepare live in your parents' house on your first job and don't even pay no rent. <laughs> Which is most of the case, in most cases. All right. Uh, let's, let's go on a little bit further. Verse 10. No, we no, did verse 10. 11. Right. Right. Teach me thy way, O Yehoah, and lead me in an even path because of them that lie in wait for me. Uh -huh. Deliver me not over unto the will of my adversaries. Okay. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out violence. All right. For now, this is something that, that we experience. Not just something you're just talking but something he actually experienced. All right, continue. Yes. The 13th verse reads, If I had not believed to look upon the goodness of Jehovah in the land of the living, wait on Jehovah, be strong, and let thy heart take courage. Yea, wait for, yea, wait thou for Jehovah. Hallelujah. All right there, hallelujah. See, so that means he took courage in that. I was taught that. That I could, no matter how bad things get, I could look confident. You know, like, like, like I already know it's a ram in the bush. And this is what the psalm of repentance is that, you know, we all have to pay for a certain amount of things we, uh, for what we do in life. It's how much you pay. You know, but the thing is that when the creator exact judgment on us, he don't exact oftentimes the full judgment that we deserve. Even he told Abraham, our father, Abraham, that the iniquities of the Amorites are not yet fulfilled. And they got time to mess up a little bit more or they got time to straighten up. But, but, what, but, but, but they straighten up, it's okay. But the, the, one of the things we got to understand is that no one gets away from the creator, you know, and, 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 and um, if we approach this particular season, going into the money of Elul, where it said, Ani, Ledodi, Wadodi Lee, I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. Um, we got to say, well, how much we love the creator and try to make a change in our life. So the first judges we set up at the judgment, the judges, and officers over ourselves and not be like the book of judges where you just got judges but no enforcers. So with that, I hope you got something what I said, any mistakes from my own. And, um, and I know somebody last time I spoke it left a, a comment that I meant to address, but I forgot what it was now. So forgive me, but uh, uh, any um, statements or questions you could address um, on the chat. And uh, if I look at it, I'll try to remember in the future. Once again, Toda again, um, Nasik, thank you for um, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you've shared with us. And um, we thank the Most High God for blessing you with that wisdom and that understanding. And I pray that the creator of heaven and earth will continue to be with you and bless you and continue to keep you. I don't know what that question was, 
But um, maybe we'll catch it next time. Until yeah. then, everyone, um, early Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And I pray that the creator of heaven and earth will be with us all. Shalom.